Welcome here to Talk FCB and welcome back to the channel here today, guys. We're honestly, I'm not happy. I'm very, very frustrated. I'm very much confused as well. And I'm angry about what we saw in the Coppola Ray last night. The almost inevitable way that throughout that second half, he just knew it was going to happen. Time after time after time. And we've conceded three goals against a third division side. That is not okay. Today we're going to be talking about the players. We are going to be talking again about Xavi. It's all coming up along with Robert Lewandowski's suspension. All of that situation which has finally been confirmed. So come on. And let's do it. But before we do come on to those three goals conceded, and we will be, believe me, let me just start by saying, you know, there were a few positive moments last night. They were few and far between, but it was great to see Pablo Torre starting this game, having a good amount of minutes and certainly having a really positive impact on the game. Bright flashes from him. I was also really happy, of course, like I said, before the game to see Araujo back in the starting lineup there, to see him return with a goal. He had a goal line clearance as well in this one. Fantastic to see him back out there. Dembele got himself a goal. Really good finish that it was. Always nice to see him scoring goals. That's a part of his game that he still needs to improve upon. And Rafinha, he got a goal as well. And he desperately needed one there. We need to see wingers getting into the box more often. Getting on the end of those kind of low balls in and around the area. That's what Rafinha did for his goal. And of course, Ansu Fati. I'm absolutely praying here that that winning goal in extra time can give him some confidence. Confidence. It's what he desperately needs right now. He needs to feel good again. He needs to feel comfortable in himself as a player and a game winner there. A good finish that it was into extra time, like I say. Those were the positive moments. However, whilst I am happy for all four of those goal scorers and for the fact that we scored four goals in this game, it has to be said right here and now that the rest of that performance against Intercity, the third division team, it was a shambles. Now I know, and I'm going to say this right now, the early rounds of the cup, it can be tricky. I'm not saying that every single lower league team that you face, it's going to be a walkover, because sometimes these games can be awkward, going to stadiums, going to difficult pitches, it can be tricky conditions. Look at Real Madrid, they only just won a few days ago there against a third division team themselves, winning slenderly by a goal to nil. But, and this is the key, you can't concede three times. You cannot concede three goals against a team who play in the third tier. That's a joke. There is no getting around that, guys. That is utterly embarrassing from Barca last night. Barcelona B, by the way, Barca Athletic, they played into City one month ago. They kept the clean sheet. They did that. Barca, though, the first team, the senior side, concede three. And that tells you everything. And I want to look more as well about the way that we conceded. Because every single time that we took the lead in this game, especially in the second half, you knew that we were going to blow it. Every time we took the lead, every goal that we scored, you knew we'd allow Inter City to get back in the game, to score the equaliser, and that's exactly what happened. And I just think here, if we're all sitting at home, looking at what's happening, seeing that it's inevitable that this team is going to allow the opposition to come back into it, just think what the opposition are thinking. Just think what they're thinking here when they're playing against Barca, knowing that they're probably going to get a chance. They're probably going to get an opportunity here to work their way back into the game. And I just cannot believe some of the mistakes that we're seeing. And Xavi there after the game gave his response to that performance. He said, we can't be happy, but these things happen in the copper. He said, we didn't kill the game off when we were in front. We weren't good in both boxes. And we made things difficult for ourselves. He said, it's the same feeling that we had after the Espanyol game. That was a warning. And this is another one. And I would just like to say, how many warnings do we need? How many times do we need to be reminded of what we're doing wrong? About the mistakes that we are making? And it's another performance here, guys. There's no getting around this, no getting away from this. It puts Xavi under more pressure. It puts him there under more scrutiny. And I do understand those who say, you know, what is Xavi supposed to do from the sidelines there? If the players out there aren't performing, he's given players opportunities in this game. They haven't taken it. And if we're seeing individual errors, you think of what we saw yesterday from Marcos Alonso, for example. What is Xavi supposed to do about that from pitch side as a coach? You know, what do you expect him to do? 
But here's the thing, because where I do have a serious issue right now, and the most concerning thing for me with Xavi is when we're hearing in the media right now that he wants to renew players like Alonso, that actually the ambition from Xavi is to not move on from these players, not actually take a step forward and leave this behind, but to stick with it, to actually renew players like Marcos Alonso. I don't know why he's here in the first place, let alone keeping him on for several years. And that's just an example there. It's not all Alonso's fault, you know. It's not all about Alonso here, but you're hearing it right now. Xavi wants to keep Alonso. Xavi wants to keep Sergio Roberto. Xavi is begging Sergio Busquets to stay at the club. And I just don't get it. It is absolutely mind-boggling to me that this man here, who knows this club inside out, he was a phenomenal player. He understands the game. He does. There's no getting around that. But I just don't know what he's seeing in some of these players right now to actually be plotting a future with them. That, for me, that there is the concerning part. And I just think we're reaching a point right now, even at this stage of the season here, whereby all of us... We're getting quite frustrated. We are reaching a point in the season whereby it's getting a bit too much. Something has to give and we need to see improvement and we need to see it now. I'm not talking about in a few months time building and, you know, learning and doing all this stuff. We need to deliver. We have been planning for a long time now. We have been working our way back piece by piece and the time is arriving where you've got to put all that together, where you have to stand up and deliver with what you have. And I think when it comes to Xavi right now, he is going to be judged, not on this game, you know, this is not really going to come in to the overall thinking of the season, but he is going to be judged on the biggest games, where there's most at stake. And look at Sunday. That, for me right now, it's a massive game. Atletico Madrid against Barcelona at the Wanda Metropolitano. That is a game there where we have to come together, where we need to all unite as one and produce a performance. This team must stand up and Xavi has to get things right against Atleti. But in that game, Xavi is well aware now he will not be able to count on Robert Lewandowski. It has finally been confirmed there on Wednesday by the Madrid court that Robert Lewandowski's three-match ban it will stand. Huge shock, you know, who could have seen that coming? We all knew that it was going to happen. It was very much delaying the inevitable, taking it all of these days longer. And that means now that Robert Lewandowski will indeed miss our next three La Liga games. One of those, that crucial game against Atleti, one against Hitafe, and one against Girona. And it is a big blow for Barca right now, but I am happy that we've got some clarity. If it was up to me, I would have actually liked him to have began his suspension when we expected him to, if he'd have missed the game against Espanyol, we'd already planned for that, we had already had what we were doing in place, and maybe it almost threw us off that Lewandowski in the end was available, and now he's actually going to miss three more games, we could have already had that suspension underway, he could have only had two games left, but now we are left without him, it's not ideal, but there's no time to dwell on that right now. There is no time for excuses. There is no time to be looking around and thinking, OK, what can we blame? Let's look at ourselves. Let's look at what we're doing, analyse the situation and think, OK, this is not good enough for what we have, for the players, the quality, the club this is. We've got to do more, guys. Kicking off the new year now in the way that we have. We need more. We need so much more. And the time to deliver it, like I say, it is approaching. All eyes on Sunday. That's a massive game. And I think in summary, guys, here from this Copa del Rey clash, what I was hoping going into it was sort of be a bit of a confidence booster, you know, give some players opportunities, have a chance to impress, and ultimately come away from the game feeling a lot better, feeling ready to go. But that hasn't really happened here. If anything, this game has only created more questions, more doubts about the team. And that only means that they have to answer them now. It's really, really important that we do that as quickly as we possibly can to shut down this negative downtrend. Please do let me know, guys, what you thought there of the Coppola Ray performance, the three goals that we conceded, and what you make of what's happening at Barca right now. It is a strange feeling. Let me know that down below. I will see you soon, of course, with all of that build-up to that massive clash on Sunday. It is huge. I will see you soon for all of that to come. Thank you indeed for your incredible support. But until next time, as always, Vishka, Elbasa. Uh -huh.